Okay, hi everybody. We're going to do a quick video today. I'm actually I'm not really sure how quick it's going to be, but we're going to do a video today just to show you the answers for all of the programming tasks that we did. And I want to talk through each of the answers. So hopefully that will give you some clues as to how to solve these kind of problems in the future. You're going to need all of these programming skills when you do your assignment or your final college board uh, assignment which is the performance task, and that's coming up soon. So let me jump in and look at the programming 102 questions. Uh, one thing to note is that programming 102 well, had a few different versions for the test, and they're similar, but a little bit different. So I may cover uh, more than one, but I'll start with version one, and I'll work through the answers. So here we are at question one. And as you see here, I've already started. Uh, I've put in some, a basic answer code for question one. Question one asked us to use a for loop. Okay, so that was the first thing I was looking for, for one point at least, was getting a for loop in there. And your job was to print out the numbers from one to 10 with spaces in between the numbers. So the key was that how are we going to put a space right? Because we know that when we print, often we use print ln. And if you do print ln, after you, after you do the numbers, it'll print each number and then it will do a new line. So we didn't want a new line. So we had to just use print, right? And this little plus in here was joining together the number, which was in the i variable, and the space, which was just a string or a piece of text. So what we're doing is joining the number with the text, which was space. And as you see here, we ran that and we got a series of numbers. Now, where do these numbers come from? Well, they came from our for loop, which we set up. And if you remember, the for loop has three parts. And so let's talk about each one of them individually. You can see that we set up a variable, which we're basically saying here, let's make a new variable called i. And let's set it to be zero at the start. Let's keep this loop running as long as i is less than 10. And then after each loop, let's increase the value of i by one. Because i plus plus just means take this variable and add one. So each time this loop runs, it's going to print, go back here and check these conditions again. It's going to check to see that i is less than 10. It's going to add one to i, okay? So what's going to happen is the first value is going to be printed out at zero, right? So that's where we get the zero up here. And then it's going to do the loop again, add one from this, right? It's going to add one. It's going to check to see, is i still less than 10? And it will be up until nine. At this point, i is still less than 10. Once I gets to 10, it, this is no longer true, and the, the loop will stop. But our question is asking us to start at one and end at 10. So clearly we need we can't use this basic for loop. We need to adjust it in a little bit just to make it make these numbers different. Remember, we're just printing out i, whatever this variable is, we're just printing it out. So let's go and change the starting points here, which is we want to start at one. So let's start at one. Okay, you'll notice that the difference now is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now we're missing one more here. So we want to keep going to 10. So we could either change this 10 to 11, or we could just say this condition, we're going to change to less than or equal to 10. That'll be true. So if I is 10, this is still true. And so it'll keep running. And that's how we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10. Just like that. Okay. We're going to see this kind of loop in, uh, a few more questions. So let's keep going. But while I do this, I'm going to, uh, after I do each one, I'm just going to comment it out. So normally you wouldn't do this, but I'm just going to comment this out so that I will hide the question for the next one. So I can just go and test the next one directly. Okay, so let's go here and see, make a list of names of four people called PPL. Okay, so first, make a list. Okay, we've done lists quite a lot. 
So you should be aware now that making a list is kind of similar to making a variable. We give it a name, and in this case, I've given you the name here, PPL. So we're making a list called PPL. And it says, we're gonna make a list of names. Now, names are, what kind of uh, type are they? Well, to get names, we need basically strings or text. So this is how you make a list. This is an empty list, right, with the square brackets. To, to make a list of names, let's put a series of names, John, and then a comma between the values, right? So the string has to start with a quote and end with a quote, and now that is a string. That's a piece of text. Uh, JavaScript will know that and say, hey, that's just a piece of text. This is a string. It's nothing special. It's just a piece of text, a series of characters. So um, if you just wrote John with no nothing here, JavaScript would try to be trying to interpret this as like, what does this mean? What's the meaning of this word? Is it a variable? Well, JavaScript doesn't know what it is. So if I ran that and I run ran this with Peter, Peter, it would give me an error. John is not defined. Now I'll put it in quotes, right? So it didn't understand what John was because John wasn't made into anything, right? John wasn't a variable, you know, it was just, so now that I've got a, a string around there, you'll see that the same thing happens with Peter, but now it understands John, okay? And so I need two more names. Let's go with Sally and let's go with um, Bobby i.e. for the girl's name. Okay, so that's given me a, a, a list of four names of four people. Okay, and the strings, the, the list is called people. Okay, that was it. Make a list. Okay, next one, question three, and I'm going to need this list later, so I'm going to keep that there. Make a list called has cat. I'll just run that just to make sure. Uh, has cat. Okay, so there we go. Make a list called has cat. So you should immediately be writing has cat and it's gonna be some kind of list. Okay, so we don't know what's in it yet, but it says use a for loop to add four random Boolean values. Okay, let's break that down. Use a for loop to add four values. Let's talk about Booleans later, but a for loop to add four values. To do that, let's take our standard for loop. A standard for loop you can probably find uh, from the for loops section. Here's your standard for loop. The count of how many times you want to do something is here. It's in a variable up there, but you, you should know by now that if we want to do something 10 times, that's the number, right? We're putting in the number of times we want to loop in here. So let's copy that basic for loop and put it in there. Change that to four, because we want to do something four times. We don't want to be printing, so I'm going to take that away. Okay, but now we have a basic for loop which we're going to do something four times. In this for loop, we're not going to use the i value other than just to count through the times we want to loop. Okay, before we were printing out i. But in this case, we don't want to necessarily print out I, we just want to use it as a, a way to limit the number of times our, our loop is going to run. So here we got a problem of adding four random Boolean values into this list that we've got. Right now, the list is empty. We want to add to a list. Let's go back to our docs here. Now, let's take uh, arrays or lists. Let's find those. Where are they? Arrays. And as you see, we've got the empty array there. How do we add to a list? Well, here, add to an array. Array, that's the name of the array, the name of the variable, right? In our case, it's not ARR. In our case, it's has cat is the name of the variable, the list. But the main thing you need to know is dot push and the thing you're gonna put in there, right? LM stands for the element or the thing that you're adding. So we're gonna use push 
to add to this list. So let's go here and say uh, has cat dot push and we're going to add something in here but what are we going to add? That's the question. So let's go back to the the question and see here four random boolean values. Okay, so we need random, something random. That should give you the clue. And we need Boolean values. What is a Boolean value? Well, Booleans are a type. They are true or false values. That's it. All right, it's a Boolean or a binary thing. So it's true or false. Uh, numbers, obviously, numbers are different types. You know, all these things. And strings are basically, you know, text between the quotes, right? And it can include, include numbers between the quotes. But when it says Booleans, we're looking for true false values. So Booleans only have two type of values. It's uh, true or false. How do we get random though? So let's go back to docs. You'll see here, um, random numbers. So randomizer would be the section you're looking at. A randomizer, this, this kind of code here will give you a, depending on what you want, it'll give you a number as an integer. So a number is also called integers. So you can get a number between low and high, but we want a Boolean. So we're gonna use this one, next Boolean. The output of this function would be a random Boolean value. Okay, so what we're gonna do is put that inside here. And we don't need the semicolon there. So what this does is it's going to run four times it's gonna do this loop. And it's gonna to add to this list a random Boolean value. Whatever's inside here gets added to the list. So you'll see that this has to get worked out first. JavaScript's going to work this out and say, okay, give me a Boolean value. And that Boolean value is either going to be true or false. So this is going to get turned into true or false. And then it's going to get added to our array. So let's go ahead and run this. And then after, I'm going to print uh, this array has cat. Maybe print a len better. All right, so let's run and see what happens. So you see that we've got false, 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 true. Because this is random, every time I run, it's gonna be a different set of true, false values. It's random, right? So you can see, you can prove that it's random this way, okay? If I just typed in true or false in here, it wouldn't be random, it would be set. But the randomizer gives us some random values. Okay, and the for loop is giving it to us four times. It's gonna push a random value into the list. Okay, so I'll remove that now. Okay, and I'll keep my list, but I'll, I think I'll just save the printout here. I'll comment that out. I'll keep my list. Let's go to the bonus question. Here we have a bonus question. All right, so this one is make a function. Making functions. Now, we haven't covered this in great detail in the course. We will be covering more of it, but we haven't covered it in a lot of detail, but I have shown you before. So that's why I put it as a bonus question. Making a function is not too tricky, but it's basically, well, let me let me explain exactly what a function is, okay? When you make a function, and let's call it x, we have a possible input for that function that goes in there. The input can be kind of anything, uh, you know, you can have one input, you can have many inputs. You don't have to call them inputs. These, these things are basically variables that you're saying, I have space here for uh, you to pass information to this function. And it can use that information in the code some way. Okay. These are also, these inputs are also known as parameters and the formal name for them is parameter. So these here, if, if you look at it, I have a function called x, which takes three parameters, okay? But 
I only wanted one. So it says here, make a function which takes a list as a parameter. So let's put it in here. And I'm just going to say ARR. That gives you an idea that it's an array. It's not, it doesn't have any meaning. I could just put A1 or I could put um, Bobby, whatever. It's a name. It's, an, it's the name of a variable. So you don't have to worry too much about what it's called. I'm just going to call it ARR. So you know I'm looking for an array. Okay. The only, the only key with making variables is you don't want to use something that JavaScript has already reserved. Something that's in the docs something that you're going to see in here that's already a name of something else, you probably wouldn't want to use that. We're using ARR. Now my function, uh, it's meant to be printing a list out with spaces. So I'm going to call it something that makes sense, like print list. That seems pretty good name for a, a function that prints a list. Now functions, they take an input. Sometimes they have an output. Sometimes they will return something at the end, right? Sometimes there's a return value. But in this case, it's not asking us for a, an output. So we don't need a return function to output anything at the end. This function is designed just to print a list, right? With spaces. Now I believe that we've done something like that before, right? We've printed something with spaces. So we're going to be using something like this again. Let's, let's do it from scratch though. We're given an input as a list. Now at the moment when we're writing this function, it's theoretical. This is a theoretical function. The code is not going to run unless we run this function. We're just designing a function to do a theoretical thing, which is let's print an array. So if this array is called ARR, we're going to take that array and make and go through it and print each each item. So let's make a for loop and let's make a var i equals zero, i less than. Now, how many loops do we want? Well, we wanna go through this array one by one. If the array has four items, then we wanna do it four times. If the array has 10 items, we wanna do it 10 times because we wanna go through each one. So we need, to get the length of that list. And we do that by going to the length of the list. And we're gonna increase by one each time. So I is gonna be standing for the index of the list. Okay, if you remember from the past, ARR and we say it's for example zero, like that, that stands for the first item in the list. That stands for the second item, the third item, the fourth item, the fifth item, etc. This is the index of the list. So we're just using i to act as the index for our list. As we go through, we're going to say, okay, the index is going to start at zero and go all the way up to right before the length. And what do we want to do? We want to print each item with spaces. So we want to print and we want to access the array item using the index that we just made, which is i, right? We're going to use that as the index. And as we loop, this number is going to change from zero all the way up to array length minus one. That's the last value. And then we're going to also add a space between them. Okay, so that, that gives us our, our loop. So what happens when we run this? Question for you at home. What happens when we run this code? Let's see. Nothing happens. Why does nothing happen? Because we haven't given it, we haven't called this function. Like I said before, a function is a theoretical thing. It's just something that is there that we can use. It's like print. Print's a function too. If you don't call print, it won't print anything. It's just waiting to be used. So we need to actually use it to print uh, the people list, right? So we're gonna actually now use that function by using its name, print list. And let's give it a list that we have, which is the people list, PPL, right? So that, that list exists. So let's put PPL in here and semicolon at the end. And now it prints this list. Right? 
So what happens? What's actually happening here? It's taking this list, right? It's calling this function. So where you see ARR, that gets the people list, right? It gets put as the input there. And it takes that people list and it checks, okay, what's the length? One, two, three, four. So it puts four here. And then it runs through. What's the uh, index zero of array, which is people list? What's the index zero of people list? It's John, print John. Then join it with a space and print it, right? So John with a space gets printed. Next step, array index index one gets printed with a space, Peter, right? And then index two, and then index three, and then it stops. So that's the, the idea. We can also print the has cat list, and it's gonna do the same thing with that list too. We've got the has cat list here, so we can print that too, okay? Now you'll notice that the problem with this print list uh, thing is that it doesn't have a new line at the end and it keeps on the same line. So maybe we could fix our code here by print ln, just an empty one there. And now that should fix it so that we get them on different lines. And at the end of that print list function, we find we should probably print a new line there. So by, by testing out our code and actually running it with two things, we've actually found a small, tiny little bug which has made our code better. So good testing will show you any problems, should show you any problems, all right? All right, so we've, we've tested it out there. Uh, we, didn't, we weren't required to print that out. So I'm gonna remove that and I'm gonna comment this out now because I don't need it to be printing out. I'm gonna go forward and test the next thing. Okay, so uh, question five. For each of the names in the people list, ask the user what their age is and save it in a list called ages. Okay, so here we've got uh, something, like we've sort of got a clue here where it says four for each of the names ask the user what their age is and save it in a list called ages. Meaning we have to create a new list called ages. So let's go and do that first. And let's make it an empty list. Because we're also gonna use that same uh, technique of pushing like we did up here. When we pushed added to a list. So we're gonna add to this list. And we're gonna ask the user what their age is and save it. So we need another for loop we need to go through the names list. So I'm gonna use a four and, oops, sorry, var i equals zero. Now, how many loops? Well, we're going through the names list, so we're gonna type names.length, oops, i plus plus. The more you practice of these for loops, the better you're gonna get, the, the more it's gonna become clear what we're doing, okay? This is now going through the names list. It's gonna do a loop for each name, okay? So let's now, we've got for each of the names, yes, okay? But we now need to use each name to ask that, ask the user what that person's name is. And then, so we need to do some user input, which is gonna be here, right? If you remember, if you wanna grab a, a piece of text or a string, read a string, then you're gonna read line. If you wanna read a number or an integer, right? Numbers without a decimal point, then we're gonna use read int. So what we need is to read int. And the prompt that's gonna be there is, for example, like, what is your age? There we go, good, good idea. Okay, let's copy that one. So do we wanna save it into a variable? Maybe not. We wanna actually push it in, but let's just save it as a variable to start with. Okay, so I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna make it vera age equals read int, what is your age? Now, I don't want necessarily what is your age. I want the name of this, whoever it was, uh, you know, all of these names. So let's use this i value, the index with the names list to add in here 
the person's, so it's going to be someone's age. Okay. To do this, we need to separate these strings into two bits. Okay. So I've got uh, here, I've got that string and I've got that string. So now it's, let's join them. You see, I've got pluses. And in here, I'm going to get the actual age, right? So, sorry, the name of the person. So let's use the names list and then use the index to get the name of that person. So now what I've done is I've joined this. It's like a cut and paste joining these strings together. It's like you cutting a section out. I want this piece of text and I want the name joined together, the name from the list. And I want then to join together with the question, right? And it's going to make one big string, which is going to ask the user what what is that person's age? Okay, so let's let's watch it. Uh, this this won't save it yet, but let's just watch it run. Okay, what have I done wrong? I know what I've done wrong. I've called it names. What what's what's wrong here? Well, it says names is not defined. There is no names. It doesn't recognize names. I've got a people list. That's a list. So let's change that to people. Okay, fix that up. Okay, that should make more sense. Okay, there we go. So now I've got a question here. Uh, what is John's age? Let's call, let's say John's 15. What is Peter's age? 16. What is Sally's age? 17. What is Bobby's age? 18. So you see here that it's inserted this name, which actually is that, came from the people list, right? How did I get it? Using the index that I've been using here from zero all the way to people.length. So adding in part of the, that people list to get the question. And it might be even more convenient to have a little space after there just for a polite, a polite little space. Okay, so that's got the names, but now we need to ask the user, okay, we've asked the user, and save it in a list called ages. So right now we haven't saved each age into this list. So let's do that now. After we get that age, it's saved, that number has been saved into this variable here. So let's then push that variable using ages as the list dot push, and let's push age into that list. So it's going to add that. And then finally, I'm going to print that uh, using my function print list. I'm going to print that ages just to show you, show that that has been printed. Okay. So what's going to happen is each loop is going to run. It's going to get a new age, push it into the list, and then do it again. Ask the user, push it in, and then ask the user. Right. So. You might, uh, you'll see the result at the end when we run it. Let me just put in 11, 11, 11, 11, or 12. And you'll see here, yeah. Okay, and then so it's printed out that ages list there. That was an optional thing. You don't need to do that. I'm gonna take that away. And I'm also gonna comment out, I think, uh, yeah, don't know if that's a great idea. Uh, well, I, I gotta just keep that. I do, I don't really want to have uh, all of these. I don't want it to ask me every time now that I've done the question. So I'm going to comment that out just for the sake of uh, this. And I'm going to just add some ages of my own up here just so I can uh, continue if ever I need to use this later. This isn't the answer. This is just me moving on. Okay. All right. So print out a statement using all of the lists. Use the Boolean value in hasCat to decide what to print. So remember the Boolean values are true or false. And one of the structures that we looked at before was if and else. If and else takes a Boolean expression, which means something that can be true or false. And it will decide if it's going to print, if it's going to run this code or not, right? So if this is true, it's going to run all this code. If it's not true, it'll run this code. 
right? So we've, we've done if and else statements. This is asking us to use this value has in has cat to decide what to print. Either that Andy has a cat or he doesn't have a cat. So we need an if and else statement and a for loop, okay? And we're gonna use all of the lists, meaning that we're gonna use the ages, we're going to use the has cat and the, the name list, okay? So they should all be there. For example, Andy is 25 and has a cat, okay? So let's take that little example, copy and paste that there. And let's take that string, just an example of something that doesn't happen. Right? So we can see that if something, right, if, and I'll put the test in there later, or else, something else. And I'm just gonna build this slowly, right? But I'm not gonna build it in exactly the right order, but I'm gonna just put that in there. Yeah, uh, let's print this. Uh, print it line on two. So now I'm building this print statement, not yet knowing that what the condition is. But here is the rough structure of what it's going to look like, right? If he has a cat, so if has cat is true, then I can say this person, and I think. Now let's adjust these strings. So we're gonna do this string add. I don't need, um, I need that name. So it's not gonna be a Andy, it's gonna be that whoever is in that list, right? So the name is gonna go here and the age is gonna go here. So I can take that away. As I build my string, you'll see and has a cat, okay, All right? And so I'm gonna use the same kind of thing here. I'm just gonna copy this up to the end. Okay, so it's gonna look something like that. Name is age, okay? So I'm gonna fix this later. Let's now look at the rest of it, okay? So we need to go through all the lists. So for each person, I need to go through this. So let's use that for loop that I wrote before. Remember when I wrote a for loop where I said var i is zero, i less than people dot length. This goes through the names list, the names of the people. And let's tab that in and now, there we go. So this is going to create a for loop which will do this if and else structure. So it's going to loop through the people and put them through this. Either it's going to print this one or it's going to print that one. And I'm going to access their names, right? Now remember that my ages list is corresponding to that name as well. So if I'm at index zero, this should be referring to Peter, right? Or sorry, John. John is at index zero. He has a random thing for has cat, right? True or false. And I've given the ages here. I didn't want to enter them every time. So I'm just going to put the na the ages here like this. But each of them will correspond to their index that they're at. So we're just going to use, for the name, we're going to use PPL, right? And the index. Then we're going to use the age, which is the ages list. And we're going to use the, the same index, i. And, ha, but what are we going to do with has cat? Well, has cat will be a Boolean, right? So has cat i is going to tell us true or false for that index. If it's true, so if has cat is true, that means he has a cat. And we'll, we'll print this statement. If this one is false, then it's going to print this one. So has the value in, in this list is going to tell us to, to either print this one or that one. And that's how we can use these indexes. Then I'll just copy this one here. PPLI ages I. 
Okay, and so we've basically just joined a string together and used the loop to go through the whole list of names. Let's test it out. Okay. Okay, so you see, John is 12 and has a cat. Peter is 13 and doesn't have a cat. Sally's 14 and it doesn't have a cat. Bobby's 15 and doesn't have a cat. It's kind of hard to see what it is without seeing what the random numbers are. So let's go back here and then print out our has cat list. Okay, so you'll see that now it's all false, right? John is 12 and doesn't have a cat, doesn't have a cat, doesn't have a cat, doesn't have a cat. As you see, that's corresponding to this list now. Let's run it again. Now we've got false, true, false, true. So John is 12, doesn't have a cat. Peter is 13 and has a cat. Sally's 14, doesn't have a cat. Bobby's 15, has a cat. See, corresponding to the same index in each list. All right, and that's how we do that one. Okay, it's joining together a for loop with an if statement. All right, let's go to question seven, shall we? I'm gonna comment out some of this stuff, so I don't need all of this. I'm gonna re-comment out this one and comment out this whole thing. All right, question seven. Ask the user for a number and then print a message stating whether that number is odd or even. All right, so asking the user, we've done user input, right? Ask for a number So here. Really straight from here, ask the user for a number. What number are we looking for? Well, let's ask the user here. Prompt stands for a piece of text to give the user a message. Please enter a number. Okay, so now that number should be stored in num. Let's now test that number to see if it's odd or even. Okay, so if num modulus two, what is this? When you divide by two, what's the remainder? If the remainder is zero, when you divide by two, then we know it's even. If you've got no remainder when you divide by two, it means it's an even number. So let's print a message. The number you entered is even. Else, the number you entered is odd. Okay. In this question, I was testing your knowledge of, if you remembered, how to do this. Because we did this probably about, I don't know, five or six times in class. So by now, that structure should be familiar to you. Testing to see if something's even or odd. Okay. This gives the remainder after dividing this statement here. The remainder after dividing this number by two. You can use other numbers here, dividing by three, dividing by four, but because we're looking for even numbers, um, that's what we need to use. So let's output and print. Uh, please enter a number. Let's try 25. The number you enter is odd. Let's run again. Please enter a number, 26. The number you enter is even. Run again. Minus 78. The number you enter is even. Okay, so it works. We've tested it pretty well. Okay. Great. I'm going to uh, comment that out now that it's done. Okay, question eight. Print out all the even numbers up to 100. Well, hey, we've been here before. We just did this even number stuff. So let's now go and print them all out. So to do something many, many times and a certain number of times, we use a for loop, right? So four. Now, is zero an even number? I don't think so. I don't think so. So I'm gonna start at one. And I'm gonna do less than or equal to 100 because I wanna go up to 100. I think I'll include 100. And let's add plus plus after each time. 
So there is two, I guess there's two ways to do this question. You could have started at two and just added two each time. If you knew how to do that, you could have done it that way, right? And just print it out, um, print it out I. And let's just add a space. Or actually just do print ln, easier. Okay, so let's do that. You could have done this way. Now, if that if it did that way, it's going to be every single number up to 100. I could have started at 2 here and gone, instead of plus plus, which adds 1, I could have done plus equals 2. And in that case, it's going to start at 2 and add 2 each time. Each loop is going to add 2. But there's another way to do it. And so that this one's pretty easy, but it, it's, uh, you know, fairly basic. Let's go back to that plus plus, if the, the, or you knew, how would you do it? Well, you can add an if statement. If I modulus two equals zero, then print ln. So in this way, and you can start at one. In this way, it'll only print if this test is true. So if the number is even, it'll print it out. So now we get the same result. So there's two ways of doing that problem. Alrighty. Let's comment that out. And continue. Ask the user for a number, then print out high that many times. All right. We've just done that. Uh, so let's go and copy that code of asking the user for a number. But I don't want to type that again. Bing, var num. Okay, now we've already declared num up here. Technically, I mean, I commented it out, but I've already used num. I don't want to declare a new variable called num because I've already got a variable called num. So let's just reuse that variable. I'm not going to use var, I'm just going to say num. Or I'm just going to actually better off, let's just create a, uh, I'm going to call it high num just because it's a special variable, just different different name, I just want to do the name. Okay, so let's see, high num. Uh, so please enter a number. Uh, number of times high. Ah, can't use that. Let's use single quote. There we go. Please enter a number of times to say high. So in theory, I'm gonna get a number in here from the user. I'm going to use that number to print out that many times. So what do I need to do? I need to use a for loop. And here we have I again. And remember, the number that goes in here is going to be the number of times it loops. So as you see, this is my standard for loop. The number that goes in here is the number of times that I'm going to loop. So I'm going to put in which number? High num. That's the number of times that I want to do this loop. And print high. Right, so it's going to keep printing, printing, printing high. And I think after that loop's finished, I'm going to print ln just to add another print ln in there. Let's watch this happen, okay? Enter a number of times to say high. Let's try three. Hi, hi, hi. Okay, let's try it again. Right, let's try 15. Hi, 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 hi. Okay, now let's try zero. Okay, no, didn't print any times. So there you go. That's how you do it. Alrighty, let's comment out this and keep going. Hope you're learning something here. Bonus question. All right, print all the numbers that are divisible by three up to 100. Use commas between the numbers. This bonus was actually very similar to a previous question that we did. Divisible by three, meaning that you can divide it by three and there'll be no remainder. So if I recall, there was a number here 
print the numbers out that are divisible by three. Here we go. Looks like I've got that answer right here. And I don't even need to really change it much. Copy that. Paste it in there. Now you're saying, um, teacher, this is not that same thing. Well, look, I'm going to change this. I'm going to take away that. I'm going to add in a comma. So I'm going to do a plus and a little comma in there in quotes. So basically now that's given a little, uh, don't even move that space. There we go. Ta da Numbers divisible by three up to 100. Use commas between the numbers. Okay, but I've got a little comma at the end now. Uh, maybe I probably wouldn't have taken any points off for that. But it is a small little error. I didn't really like that little comma at the end. So, how about this? Instead of that, I will uh, let's see. To get rid of that little comma, I'm going to stop before 99. Okay, that's my last number. Maybe I'll stop before that, and then I can print the last one out. Or I could do the other way. Maybe I'll do it the other way. So my first number is three. So let's try it this way. Let's try, if I'm gonna start at three, then I'm just gonna go here and print three. let's print three comma okay here and then let's start at four and then instead of printing I comma I'm gonna print comma I so what have I done here well, I just started at three and then I decided if there's going to be another number, actually I don't need the comma there, I'm going to start at three, print three out. And if there's another number after that, it's going to print a comma and then that number. And that way, I'm going to get to the end. Actually, my space, I don't need the space. I'm going to get to the end and there's no comma there. Right. So there's many ways to do this, uh, solve this. This is known as a fence post problem where you have a fence posts. That's your post. Uh, th this is your post and this is your fence. And so you have two, two posts for one piece of fence and you don't want another uh, fence at the end without a post. So it's kind of that same problem where you just have to fix it this way. If you wanted to fix it that way, I, I wouldn't have taken points off, uh, but it was a bonus question. So um, it's just a little, yeah, a little detail, but yeah, that's fixed. Okay, moving on. I don't want to make this video too long. I'm talking about fences. Okay, bonus question. Here, write a function which takes a word and a number as parameters. So remember I described parameters before when I said you make a function uh, and it's called multi-word. That's the name of the function. Two parameters, one is a word and one is a num. Parameters are your inputs, okay? So this is taking a theoretical word and a theoretical number, and you're gonna print that word out this many times. We just did that when we printed out hi that many times, if you remember. Let's copy that code, I like that code. Let's put it in there and say, right? So that, that was the code that printed out stuff a bunch of times. We don't want to print high. We want to print word. So let's replace the high, not with quote word, because that would just be the text word. We want whatever's in word variable up here to be printed. Okay. 
And how many times? Well, we want to print it num times, whatever this number is. So we're just changing that basic structure to put these values in there. And let's test your function with three different inputs. Okay, so let's do this three times. Multi word. I'm going to test it three times. Let's give it okay the example given dog four. We know what we should get. Let's use that and then type it again. So we're testing three different inputs. T word mul T word um, cat five and multi word bird three. Okay. Now, small problem, I notice in my multi-word function, I don't have a new line. So it's gonna print that. I wanna print a new line at the end. So just an empty new line there. All right, let's test it out. There we go, four dogs, uh, five cats, and three birds. All right, so multi-word works. You just change the inputs and you get different results. That's multi-word, okay? Writing a function, parameters, and using those, okay? You see that functions save us time and energy. We don't have to write the same code over and over again. We just use the function again and again with different inputs. That's why it's they're kind of cool, okay? I'm gonna comment out these three examples. Multi-word can stay there because it won't do anything. Last question here. We're trying to print out the first three letters of each name using the people list. Okay, so let's go through the people list. Okay, we've done this many times now, so I'm just going to type it out. Okay, how do we get the first three letters? Okay. So there's two ways. If you remember that, um, you know, strings are kind of a special thing. So let's go into here and look at strings. You'll notice here that we've got a couple of uh, functions that strings have. Like if our string is called str example, this is the example, then str dot substring will give us a part of a sub a string. Okay. from the start character to, but it also would do from start to end. So we can use this substring, which would use the character of the start, but not including the character of the end. So if we want to print out the first three letters, right, we would need to start at index zero and finish not at two, but probably about three. So this, whatever the string name is, dot substring. Now our string is going to be from our list. So let's get that string from the list. People and use the index i. That's now we've got our string dot substring and from 0 to 3. will give us the first three characters. What are we going to do with that? Let's print it out. So I'm going to print that. And then what do I want at the end? Well, do I want to join that together with a comma? Let's do it like the question said. Let's print it with a comma. Oh, let's do a space, it's easier. I didn't really indicate. All right, so there we go. Jaw, jaw pet, sal, bob. Yeah. That's one way to do it. The other way to do it is to treat each string as though it's an array itself. So another way to do this question would have been to use the same for loop, but instead of uh, doing it this way, we would have had to use another loop to loop through each, each item, right? So for var j equals zero, we're gonna look at j dot uh, sorry, j less than three. 
can do three j plus plus we're going to use a little loop here to print each each section of of whatever uh, j was so we're going to use the sorry we're going to use the people right and we've got the i value here So that's I, and then we're going to use J. Actually, I'm not even sure that'll work. Oh, it did. Well, there you go. So what what actually happened here was that when I when I got this uh, list, let's break it down a little into one more step. Let's just save this name into. A variable right so what let's just say that I saved name from this I value right as we're going through the people list and getting each name here and if I said name here and I use this index the second index to do a loop through that name the first three characters and use that to index each character because Strings are basically lists of characters. So if you see that's zero, that's one, that's one, no, sorry, that's one, that's two, three, right? So I could have looped through using zero, one, two, three, just like that, using the name. So that was another way to do it. Um, not as clean, I think this one's an easier way to do it, and I would definitely advise using stuff that's already there uh, if you can so use use functions that are already there don't rewrite functions that's my best advice but that would have done the, the job that would have given you the same results and obviously doing a space here would have helped okay oh that was too many spaces sorry no space there. I should have done a space here. Print. After the loop finishes. There. Uh -huh. Okay. So two versions of that bonus question. This one, the, the far easier one. Okay. So practice using substring if you need to. All right. So that was version one of the, uh, the problems. Let's look at a couple of variations, and I noticed there, there are some variations here in the other problems, okay? So in, the, in version two of this, and some people got this, uh, this was a while loop that it asked you to print out the, the numbers from one to 10. So let's look at that as a while loop. With a while loop, there isn't a variable or a counter built in. All a while loop has is some condition in here, which is going to evaluate to be true or false. Basically, it's something that's going to come to true or false, right, in here. So something we're going to test, and then the loop will keep going. You have to be a little careful with while loops, because if the test never, never gets false, it'll run forever. So we're going to make a variable here, and let's start a variable. We'll just call it x. Or we'll just call it i actually, because we use i all the time. Let's start i at one, and then while i is less than or equal to ten, we're going to print i with a space in between. Now, don't forget we need to increase i by one, so i plus plus. You'll see here it's basically a for loop. If you can see that, it's a for loop just with the different things in different places. It's kind of cut up into different pieces. So the for loop is there. Uh, it's more easy to write a for loop sometimes. Whiles are for different purposes. We wouldn't really use a while in this situation, but I asked you to do it, so that's why. Uh, and so that's how it prints out, one to 10. Okay, uh, four people has dog that's about the same. Uh, commas. Let's see. 
odd numbers up to 100. Okay, so that was a variation of our last code. The last code had our printing even numbers up to 100. Where was that? Um, oh yeah, so here was the even numbers. Let's see, let's change this very fast for the version two. So instead of the even numbers, let's print out the odd numbers. Well, if when we divide a number by two, we get a remainder of one, we'll know it's an odd number. And that should do it. Okay, what, what am I doing here? Okay, so I'm just gonna, let's get rid of that now. Uh, so you, you'll see that that's the easy way to change that question. Not really a big difference, small difference there. Okay, and let's go back and do another one. Uh, divisible by four, well, that's kind of the same. Okay, I think a lot of that is the ver almost the same. And there was a version three. Let's check the version three. Were there any differences there? Okay, this one asks us to, to put it instead of a space, we put a dash. That one the same, I showed you how to do that. Uh, foods, random values. Okay, I think this is all about the same. This one was asking for a price, which is kind of the same as asking for an age for each of the foods in the food list, ask the user for a number. You would have done the same thing as before when you did, uh, where is it, version one? When you asked the user for their age, you would have done this. Right, which was basically like, go through the list. The only difference would have been that this list may have been called foods, and we may have been, what is the price of that food? Right, That would have been the difference, but everything else would have been about the same, just the names of the lists. Okay, so I hope this has been kind of helpful, uh, that this has been a quick little summary of, actually it wasn't that quick, it was about an hour. Um, but it was a little summary of how to do these questions. Hopefully it was an hour well spent, uh, getting better at programming. Any questions, please forward to me and I'll try and answer them. Thank you.